We've all been through tough breakups before, and we know how much it hurts to feel alone. That's exactly how 18-year-old Sally Ann Bowman felt after splitting up with her boyfriend, Louis. She was a beautiful, bubbly young woman with her whole life ahead of her, but in the dead of night, her world would be shattered by an unimaginable tragedy. The story of Sally Ann Bowman is a chilling reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places. Sally Ann Bowman was born in Carlshalton, England, on September 11, 1987. Growing up in a loving family with supportive parents and three sisters, it was clear from a young age that Sally Ann was destined for greatness. She had an incredible talent for singing and dancing and was accepted into the prestigious Brit School alongside famous alumni like Adele and Amy Winehouse. But that's not all. Sally Ann was also blessed with natural beauty. With her long, slender frame, stunning blue eyes, and infectious smile, she turned heads wherever she went. After winning a competition to be the face of Swatch, Sally Ann's modeling career took off as she caught the attention of Pulse Model Management. Her biggest dream was to grace the cover of Vogue, and it seemed like her dreams were about to come true. By 2009, Sally Ann had already moved out of her family's home to gain independence while working part-time as a hairdresser and model. As her apartment was nearby, she had the chance to visit her family frequently. She was in an on-and-off relationship with 20-year-old Louis Sproston. Despite their frequent breakups, the two always managed to find their way back to each other. On the brink of fulfilling her dreams, Sally Ann Bowman's life was about to take a dark and twisted turn. But the day before was like any other day for the 18-year-old, who had just broken up with her boyfriend Louis. Determined to lift her sister's spirits, Nicole had planned a girl's night out. As the sun began to set on that fateful day, Sally Ann bid her mother goodbye and headed toward the driveway, where her sister Nicole waited for her. But as they were about to embark on their journey to London, they had a change of heart. Instead, they opted to stay in Croydon and hit up Lloyd's Bar for a night of fun and relaxation. As the night wore on, they were ready to call it a night, but Sally's friends wanted to keep the party going and decided to head back to Nicole's apartment for an after party. Sally Ann, still feeling the sting of heartbreak, wasn't interested in continuing the festivities. Eventually, they made their way back to her sister's place where Sally, fueled by liquid courage, decided to call her ex-boyfriend Louis, who was also out partying with friends in Kingston. Driven by a surge of jealousy, Sally Ann concocted a story to get Louis's attention. She claimed that her sister had been arrested and Sally Ann needed a ride home. She knew that Louis couldn't resist coming to her aid. At around 2.20 a.m., Lewis arrived to pick Sally Ann up and they started driving towards her apartment. The air was thick with tension and emotions were running high. Lewis suspected that Sally Ann had been with other guys, while Sally Ann believed that Lewis had been with other girls. Their voices grew louder as they argued outside her flat in Blenheim Crescent. Eventually, the two made up. However, the two had been arguing for two hours and Lewis was drained. As Lewis went to get back into his car around 4.15 a.m., Sally Ann pleaded for him to stay a little longer. Suddenly, she grabbed his t-shirt, accidentally ripping off his necklace in the process. After a couple of minutes, Lewis managed to get back into his car and lock the doors. Through his rear-view mirror, he watched Sally Ann grab her handbag and walk away towards her house. Little did he know, this would be the last time he would ever see her. What occurred next would haunt Lewis for the rest of his life. In the wee hours of the morning, a strange noise jolted a neighbor from their slumber. They stumbled to the window to investigate, but all was quiet. No one was around, and the silence was eerie. Brushing off their unease, they returned to bed. However, a nagging feeling persisted, and five minutes later they checked again. To their surprise, a lone man walked down the street, with no one else in sight. The neighbor dismissed their concerns, assuming it was just the typical foxes that roamed the city. 
At around 6.30 a.m. the following morning, the same neighbor was awakened by a feeling of unease. Looking out the window, they caught a glimpse of a strange object hidden behind a skip. Despite the early hour, they put on their dressing gown and slippers and went across the road to investigate. As they walked around to the left side of the skip, their hearts sank. They knew that a truly horrific sight was awaiting them. The sound of the knock on the door in the early hours of the morning jolted Linda Bowman from her sleep. Assuming that it was Sally Ann, she opened the door. Instead, she was met by three police officers. She knew before a word was said that something terrible had happened. Her beloved daughter's bright future had been brutally taken away. At first, she thought it was a twisted joke, but as the truth sunk in, Linda's screams of agony echoed through the quiet morning air. As if that wasn't enough, Linda had to confront the lifeless body of her daughter, shattered by the cruel hand of fate. As Linda Bowman walked into the room for identification, her heart was beating so loudly she could hear it in her ears. For a moment, she thought the body had dark hair and felt a brief sense of relief that it wasn't her daughter. But as she moved closer and saw the button nose and freckles, her world shattered once again. Two days later, the family was demanding justice for their beloved Sally Ann. At that point, all eyes were on her boyfriend, who was the last person to see her alive. The couple had been fighting, and the boyfriend's ripped shirt and broken necklace suggested a possible act of self-defense by Sally Ann. The arrest of Lewis on September 26th was a promising breakthrough for the investigators. But as they dug deeper into Sally Ann's murder, alarming evidence began to surface. The autopsy report uncovered a gruesome truth. Sally Ann had been attacked multiple times with a sharp object, leaving investigators stunned. But what stunned investigators most were the bite marks found on her neck, chest, and cheek. In the absence of witnesses or CCTV footage, the only solid lead was a DNA sample taken from the perpetrator. With high hopes, the sample was sent to the lab to officially link Lewis with the crime, but to everyone's surprise, it was not a match. After four days of detention, Lewis was released without charge. With this shocking development, the question remained, who was responsible for the brutal murder of Sally Ann? Nine months had passed since the gruesome murder of Sally Ann Bowman, and life in Crawley had returned to normal. But during a bar brawl that broke out while people were watching the England football team, things quickly spiraled out of control. Amidst the echoes, the police were called to the scene, and everyone involved was taken into custody for questioning. The officers took DNA samples from each of the suspects, including Mark Dixie, who was involved in only a minor assault. As he was being processed, Dixie began to sob uncontrollably, leaving officers perplexed. But as they would soon find out, Dixie's emotional outburst was not without reason. It would take another two weeks for the results of the DNA test to come back, and shockingly, it was an exact match for the DNA found on Sally Ann Bowman's body. It was clear that the nightmare wasn't over yet, and justice had a chance to be served. As the investigation into Sally Ann Bowman's murder unfolded, details began to emerge about the events leading up to her death. During the trial, the jury heard about Dixie's tumultuous personal life in the weeks leading up to Sally Ann's murder. Just three weeks before the incident, Dixie had been thrown out of his home by his girlfriend and son, and on the night in question, he had gone back to their home on Avondale Road, hoping to reconcile. When his girlfriend refused to take him back, he left and slept on the couch at a friend's house. On the night of September 24th, while Sally Ann was drinking at Lloyd's Bar, Mark Dixie was celebrating his 35th birthday with friends at the Windsor Castle Pub two miles away. The night was filled with heavy drinking, and Dixie eventually left the pub around 2.30 a.m. Dixie's story took a dark turn in the early hours of the morning when he awoke and left his friend's house. The truth is unknown as to whether he happened upon Sally Ann by chance or had planned the attack. Mark Dixie's arrest on June 28, 2006 marked the beginning of a long and gruesome legal process. In court, Dixie claimed that he had found Sally Ann unconscious and had violated her but was not responsible for her death. This defense was the only one he had, 
and he admitted to biting her cheek, only realizing that she was dead afterward. While Dixie's defense was implausible, it was the best he could come up with to justify his actions that fateful night. Despite overwhelming DNA evidence linking him to the crime, Dixie pleaded not guilty and went on trial at the Old Bailey in February 2008. It was apparent that Dixie had been relying on the fact that Sally Ann had gotten into a fight with Lewis before she passed, but the jury was not convinced and he was found guilty the same year. As the trial came to a close, it was revealed that this wasn't Dixie's first run-in with the law. In fact, it was his 17th offense. At the young age of 16, he committed his first sexual assault, tying a woman to her car before setting it on fire. He went on to commit multiple crimes, including a brutal attack on a student in Australia in 1998. Despite this, Dixie was not imprisoned or placed on a register. He was only ordered to pay a fine and deported. This decision by Australian authorities still haunts Sally Ann's mother to this day. On February 22, 2008, Mark Dixie was found guilty of the murder of Sally Ann Bowman after only three hours of jury deliberation. He was sentenced to a minimum of 34 years in prison, one of the longest minimum terms given in the UK at that time. Justice had finally been served, but the pain and loss inflicted on Sally Ann's loved ones would never be fully healed. Mark Dixie remains incarcerated to this day and is currently serving his sentence in a high-security prison in the United Kingdom. The tragedy of Sally Ann's senseless death still resonates with those who knew her and the wider public. The case also serves as a stark reminder of the importance of effective law enforcement and the need for proper procedures to be followed to prevent dangerous individuals from slipping through the cracks of the justice system. Sally Ann's family and friends continue to mourn her loss, and her memory serves as a reminder of the importance of cherishing life and the need to protect one another from harm. As we wrap up this tragic case, we can't help but wonder, how many more dangerous criminals are out there free to roam the streets? And what can we do to ensure that justice is served for victims like Sally Ann Bowman? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more true crime stories.